What is up you guys? It's your girl Kayla and I am back with another video. So today we're going to be talking about prenatal labs and what you can expect. Now, depending on your fertility center or your fertility clinic, you may be getting your prenatal labs done there. You may be getting those done with your OBGYN or you may be getting them done at an outside lab. So for me, I had mine at an outside lab. Depending on your situation, you may do it at your OBGYN's office or you may be doing it at your fertility clinic's office. It does not necessarily make too much of a difference where you go, um, unless you're in maybe my situation where you're going to an outside lab so you're not familiar with the people there. Other ways, hopefully you've picked an OBGYN and a fertility center that you are happy and comfortable with. That would make the experience a lot better and a lot smoother. Me, on the other hand, I went with a different lab just because it is COVID season right now and my fertility clinic is unable to do my labs. So they sent me to a different lab and it actually went very smoothly. I was not familiar with this group. I'm used to a group called Quest Diagnostics and this was a different lab group. So I was kind of concerned. I was like, I wasn't sure what to expect. And when I went there, they shared a building with an urgent care. And so I was pretty concerned about that, especially with COVID. I wasn't sure if it would be with the urgent care or what, but it ended up being in a different part of the building, completely unrelated to urgent care. So that was great. My biggest story was, I don't wanna go here to get blood work done and then catch COVID-19. That just was not on my to-do list for the day. <laughs> so yeah. In total though, it was really easy, really simple. I went in, checked in digitally, and then went, once the nurse got back to the front desk, she got my lab slip that you may or may not get from your doctor. Mine sent mine ahead of time, but they needed to confirm it. And then it was a good thing I had a digital copy because uh, what they had was actually cut off. So I had both of them, it was great, made it a lot simpler. My lab, because they, one other thing is because they do not do their billing in-house and they basically have it done by a third party, I did not get billed that day and I've already heard back from my insurance about my bill, but I haven't heard back from them yet about my bill, but I do know in total it's going to come out to be $155. There they quoted me at $163 or $165. So I came out about $10 cheaper than what was expected. I know it's a lot of money, but compared to what we're doing with IUI or IVF, it's not nearly as much as what we're gonna be paying out of pocket for our bios or for our actual procedures or anything else. So getting that number i just kept it in mind i said okay cool that's fine by me the fact that they also didn't bill me that same day was also welcome you know either way i would have paid it but it's always nice to not have to pay for something right up front so yeah i'm just gonna go through the different tests that we had done and explain them really quickly uh that way you guys know what to expect you may have more tests you may have less tests um, it does not really mean, you know, not everybody's going to have the same exact set of tests done. It does vary per person. There's some things that are key that we get, but others really vary. So this is what I had done. First test was called the ABO grouping and row D typing. Simply put, they were checking to see what my blood type is. I already knew that I was type O positive because I've given blood and plasma in the past. So I knew this, but they went on and tested it anyways, and it was covered by insurance. So, hey, okay, it's fine. The next one I got was an anti-malarian hormone test, which was very interesting because I wasn't familiar with what it is. And then once I found out what it is, I was kind of curious because I thought this test would have been a lot more invasive. But basically, it's checking my egg reserve or my egg count. 
and I thought that was really interesting because of course I thought that would be something that they would need to check further down along in my body. <laughs> the next one is a CBC with differential test. That one, all it is is a complete blood count to see if you have any blood type related diseases or disorders like anemia or anything like that. I already know I'm anemic, so I do spinach juices and other things to get my iron levels up. That came back fine. Um, the next one is the estradiol. That one is also another interesting one that most people are probably gonna have to take. And that's just to test to see if certain more hormones are present that indicate whether or not you are transitioning towards menopause. So me being 25, you would think that's not necessary, but menopause, although it does have common age groups, it does not have a specified age. So you can actually get your, you can actually start experiencing menopause at a young age. So it's always necessary to test it when you're trying to conceive. The next test is the HCG beta subunit quantity serum. Basically, if that sounds familiar with that HCG, it is a pregnancy test to see whether or not I'm pregnant. That I kind of thought was silly because I'm single, but it is what it is, and they're able to check my HCG levels to see whether or not they're good or not for somebody who's not pregnant, and yeah. <laughs> I am actually looking at my computer so I can make sure this is listed properly, so that's why I'm reaching and leaning down. Um, anyways, the very next one was hemoglobin A1C levels to make sure that the proteins and glucose in my bloodstream are at a decent level. The seventh test in this is progesterone, and that is a huge one that many of us are concerned with. Progesterone is a necessary hormone that the body produces that is essential to carrying a healthy or pregnancy. What or not just healthy because you can have some high risk pregnancies and other things go on, but basically you need this to carry out your pregnancy. So if you do have lower progesterone levels to help with that, they just go ahead and give you a supplement for progesterone so that that hormone in your body can um, be at those necessary levels that you need. The next two, I'm gonna actually put them together, is the rubella and varicella antibodies. These are part of the measles, mumps, rubella, and varicella vaccine that you get as an infant and in middle school. For some odd reason, my varicella, aka chickenpox, vaccine antibodies were not showing in my body, so we went on and got that done. All I had to pay was my typical copay for my insurance and is really simple. Unfortunately with me, whenever I do get live vaccines like the varicella, my arm does swell up, it gets itchy, it gets hot, it turns red, and my arm is still pretty bruised after the week of it being completely swollen. But that is typical for some people like myself with live vaccines. Other vaccines that are dead or not live, um, I don't have issues with, but it is this varicella for some odd reason. Um, my body always reacts like that. So it is what it is. The 10th test that they did, mind you, all of these were different tubes. All of these were their own individual tubes. And I'm gonna tell you, that got me. That got me good. Um, but the tip one is a thyroid stimulating hormone test to see basically if my thyroid is working properly or not. In my family, on my mother's side, we do have a history of hyperactive thyroids and one of my cousins actually had thyroid cancer. So given that, it was necessary to check me to see if my thyroid is working and I didn't get those results back yet because we're waiting until after I have my hysterosalpingogram or HSG test. Um, not looking forward to it whatsoever because <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that pain. But 
it's necessary it's coming um so we're waiting until after i get that test done to go over my hsg and my prenatal results once that's done i will go ahead and give you guys that um i'll film or i'll go ahead and post that as well um, the very next one is to check my vitamin D levels. Now she did warn me ahead of time that most women do have lower vitamin D levels than are necessary. So I wasn't surprised to come to find out that my vitamin D was lower than it needs to be. Nothing that's life threatening or anything like that. What I'm getting in my prenatal vitamins is actually enough vitamin D and say I needed more or anything like that. I would have just taken a different vitamin D um supplement but my prenatal pills they have vitamin d and they also wanted me to take in more calcium which my pills do include in them everybody's prenatal pills are different unless you're taking the same exact ones some have more nutrients than others and vice versa so thankfully i just ended up with one that already had vitamin d and calcium included in it um so yeah the very next test um I'm gonna link them together as well, but they were drawn separately, are the CMV Anti-IG capital G or IG capital M test. They did two different CMV tests. The CMV is the system megalovirus. Basically put, it's a flu. <laughs> it's a strand of the flu that you may or may not get. Most people have it. Um, but, and it's not life threatening. The only thing is you don't want to get this while you're pregnant because it's been theorized that it can cause miscarriages or severe birth defects if you do get it while you're pregnant. So with that being the case, if you are CMV negative and you're purchasing donor sperm, you want to make sure that that sperm is CMV negative because it's theorized that if you do get those CMV positive antibodies in your system, your system, just like any other live vaccine, is gonna need to fight that. And if you do get sick from that, um, you can run the risk of having a miscarriage or your child having severe um, de de developmental issues. And then the last but not least, is an STD test. That one took me by surprise because I'm like, <laughs> you could have just looked at my work from like a million years ago. But it is necessary. You never know. You may have an STD that you don't know about. You may have one that didn't show up because it was within a certain window or whatever and it was covered by insurance. So I figured, hey, they gave me an STD test. It is what it is. So yeah, in total, it was 14 separate vials. And when I tell you, that took me by surprise. My friend, she got her prenatals done and she only had like 10 vials. But me, I had 14 and I, I played myself. Basically, I saw the basket that it came in and I thought maybe she was just restocking vials because they were a lot of the same one, um, but about six of them in, I realized I'm getting a lot more tests done than I expected. And then once I reached number 10, I kind of felt like my vein was tired. Like it was a very interesting feeling. It felt like my vein from my neck all the way down to my hands needed a nap. Like it, that's the best way to put it. <laughs> Um, but hey, I pushed and thankfully once I got to number 14 and I was ready to ask her to switch arms, that was it. And it's just one of those things that we have to do. It's a necessary evil, you know, you just got to deal with a little bit of discomfort now so you can have your bundle of joy later. So yeah. <laughs> I will go ahead and list these tests down in the description box below in case you're curious and you want something in writing. And yeah, let me know how your prenatal labs have gone so far or if you're having your prenatal labs coming up and you're excited or nervous, go ahead and let me know.